Hi, this is Omni Bharti and we are here at East Clinical Summit in San Diego and today we have with us Emily Burns. You are Senior Software Engineer at Netflix. First of all, welcome to the show. Uh, let's, let's talk about what do you do at Netflix uh, and then we will, you know, move from one topic to other. Sounds good. Um, I work on Spinnaker at Netflix. Um, we're here at the Spinnaker Summit, so Spinnaker is an open source project and Spinnaker does a lot of things for Netflix. It's a continuous delivery platform. And for the past year, I've been working specifically on managed delivery. And so at Netflix, we have the problem that originally, when our users started using Spinnaker five years ago, they were cloud experts, and we gave them building blocks. And from those building blocks, they conducted their delivery pipelines, and it was pretty easy. But then over the past five years, um, it's not so easy anymore. People have Netflix has a much bigger scale. People are interacting with a lot more things and people are no longer cloud experts or maybe they no longer want to be cloud experts. So we're working on a solution which we're calling Managed Delivery. And it's a piece of Spinnaker and it will uh, bring declarative infrastructure to the platforms that Netflix uses. So AWS and Titus, our container cloud, don't have declarative infrastructure. So the first step is building that and then we want to build um, a declarative way to manage the delivery flow into that. So you shouldn't just have to define your infrastructure you should be able to declaratively define how the artifacts flow through that environment. Um, so that changes the way that you talk to Spinnaker, because instead of conducting these pipelines from all these blocks, then you're able to speak to the tool more how you think about delivery in general. Um, and so then we're building that and we're testing it out at Netflix right now. It's all open source, so anyone can get involved. And on top of that, we're building we are going to build a solution to share best practices. Um, right now, Spinnaker has managed pipeline templates, which allow you to share best practices a little. But we want to build a much better UI and workflow on top of that so you can share best practices. You can also roll out changes to those best practices without having to roll it out to everyone at once or break everything all at once. Um, and then on top of that, another layer, <laughs> we want to build um, a pluggable platform so that either experts around Netflix, experts in the community, or the teams that run Spinnaker at other companies can automatically inject opinions if people want them. So the example we give is like, what regions should I be in as a developer? Or uh, what instance size should I use? I don't want to keep up on the latest from Amazon. And so allowing people to programmatically inject those opinions and allowing them to change over time, we think will make it a lot easier to be in the engineering environment at Netflix, and it'll allow people to scale and worry about other things. So we've been working on it for the past year, and it's very exciting and <laughs> has gotten a lot of hype. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if it lives up to the hype. Right. So if you look at Spinnaker, the way it started you know, in initially at uh, Netflix, uh, and where it is today, is it becoming more and more complicated, just like Kubernetes? Or uh, so, OK, let's. It will be complicated because the kind of problem it is solving is not. But what is your goal when you look at Spinnaker to actually solve the problem or also keep it easier for people to use? I think keep it easier to use is really my main focus. Um, there is a lot of complications in every level. So Kubernetes is complicated to use. AWS is complicated to use. Spinnaker is complicated to use because you have to make a lot of choices. And really, with the work we're doing, we want to make it a lot simpler. So if you care about all the details, you can do that, always. You can always specify the details. But if you don't care, we want to make it easy for you to not care and to go about your job in a much simpler way. And I'll go back to CICD itself. Uh, it, it is critical in today's you know, cloud native world. Uh, but people have been doing CICD for a very long time. They were using their own patchwork. Mm -hmm. How is CICD evolving? Uh, with this uh, evolution of or emergence of cloud native workloads, and how is Spinnaker solving that problem in a unique way that others are not solving? Yeah, so I think what is interesting about now is that people have been trying and using a lot of CI/CD things and figuring out what works and what doesn't work and seeing the problems in existing solutions. And so I think what's unique about the things that we're doing is that we're taking our experience from the past five years in building a continuous delivery tool, integrating with all of Netflix, integrating with CI, hearing detailed and daily feedback from our users about how things can be better. And then we're pulling concepts out of that 
So instead of having to understand all the nitty gritty things and how to piece things together, you can just understand things in a, a more, in a way that like is more like you speak about things. So you care about where your commit is, you care about your artifact, you care about the environments it's in. You don't necessarily care about all the steps that you have to do in Spinnaker. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is really interesting because there's a lot of different tools and cloud platforms that are struggling with this. And people are just people are just starting to be successful with the things they're doing, but also dream about more more better workflows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. When Spinnaker you know, came into existence, and now when you look at it, and you're mentioning you know, you're adding more layers on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it, it solved one problem, mm -hmm. but what do you see now that needs to be still solved, that you keep adding all these extra layer on top of it? What, what pressing problem that you see from your users? I think that what we see is the complexity problem. So yes, all the pieces exist, and you the people are making solutions for individual things, but there's still a problem in like day-to-day -day life. So because you can easily deploy things, now people are like sharding into like seven shards or they have, you know, 10 applications that they're trying to manage. And yes, you can do that in Spinnaker, but the UI is cumbersome and it's error prone. So like, for example, when you're configuring um, your security groups for your six applications, if you mess it up in one region, like it's not really that obvious because you have to go through for every region you're deployed in. And so like, yes, a solution exists, but in my mind, it's not good enough. Like, it should be easy for our users. And like, I'm in the very fortunate position that I understand all of the pain and I understand all the tools so that then I can use that knowledge to build something better for all of our users so that they don't have to worry about that. I never want to worry about it. I would like no one else to have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that's the really interesting part of the work that I get to do because not only am I able to solve these problems for Netflix users, but there's a whole open source community. And we hear all the time, like, I rolled out Spinnaker, my deployments got safer. Thank you. And like, for me, more than the individual technical pieces, like, that's the real motivation that I have is this good user experience so that people are happier and don't need to care about this low level details. Excellent. If you look at the Spinnaker ecosystem, I see there are three kind of players. You know, when are like, of course, Netflix and Google, the people who are creating these technologies and open source project. Then there are vendors who are, you know, packaging it as a distribution. And then there are users who are just taking the open source code base and deploy themselves. Which one is more interesting to you? Uh, from the point of view, also, you get feedback also, because as an open source project, you also need them. Mm -hmm. I think, like, for me, I'm really interested in the people, well, all three, all they, three they people have like different opinions. And so we get really interesting insights from the vendors because they're going out and like the frontline people talking to all these companies. We get less interesting or less new opinions from people who are contributing, but then we get a lot of valuable like solutions to problems and a lot of valuable discussions for how we can shape continuous delivery at Netflix. So that's like a much more day-to-day -day relevant type thing. And then like just in general, users, we have like a lot of users at Netflix and users in the open source community, and they are super good at pointing out where we can be better, which is like very important. We have a tool that exists, but we're not going to stay relevant and useful without mm -hmm. that like constant attention to how we can simplify, how we can do things better. This may be a question you may or may not want to answer, uh, but if you look at CICD landscape, do you think Spinnaker will become what Linux has become to the servers or Kubernetes has become to orchestration? I don't know. <laughs> I would say that like I don't feel qualified to answer that. But what I do see is that when we talk to people that use it, everyone appreciates the attention that we put into user experience. And like Netflix is running Spinnaker at a large scale. We have lots of user feedback and we're constantly every day making it better to use in a highly scalable way. And so I think that for me, that attention to detail and usability is really important. And so I hope that that will mean that we continue to create meaningful solutions. Yeah, because if you look at Kubernetes, it was being used internally. You know, it was not mm -hmm. a project created. You know, it was tried and tested. It was badly tested, and then and same is the case with Spinnaker yeah. as well. I've covered some basic topic. Anything else you would like to go? I think the the one thing that I would like to add, maybe that I didn't say before, is that the managed delivery stuff that we're working on is all open source, 
and we really would love community participation. We're now at the time where we would love participation from adding new clouds, from adding tooling, from telling us that something already exists, any feedback, positive or negative, and any um, like testing and contribution. We, we need the help from the community to make a really good product and to make it applicable for companies outside of Netflix. When you say community, how do, because as we talked about mm -hmm. them, three yeah. different companies. Who do you count to community? All three of these, or I think primarily right now we're looking for contributor help. So people who can tolerate bugginess, tolerate fixes, aren't afraid to, you know, really dive deep on a problem and like prototype something. Um, and then I think that once we have, so we're working right now to build the managed delivery so solution that we consider prod ready. So it should be just as safe to deploy with managed delivery as your current workflow. And so there's something missing like um, automatically opting into Canaries. Um, and so once we have that and we have services going to production using it at Netflix, then we're looking for feedback from the other two sets of users. Um, so like the vendors in the space and the pure users. So not quite at that time yet. <laughs> really looking for people who have a high um, pain tolerance and are willing to be actively involved. Yeah, the, the typical community members, you know, who do yeah. they go try and if, do you have any call to action to them? You know, what is the best? Yes. So the best way to get in touch with us, we have um, a special interest group, Spinnaker as Code. And so the best thing to do is join Slack and jump in that channel. And then we have a bi-weekly SIG meeting where anyone can add items to the agenda. And so we often talk about um, MPT and managed delivery there. What is MPT? MPT is managed pipeline templates. And so Google is investing in the V2 version of managed pipeline templates. And so managed pipeline templates are a really common way to have like a standard set of pipelines that a team who's running Spinnaker would ship with or to share the workflow or store pipelines as code. And so it's this um, as code like interaction that is relevant for both managed delivery and pipeline templates. And so we have a SIG that's focused on both of them. Um, and then hopefully as things go forward, we'll have, because we are talking about these things, we'll have a good integration for the managed pipeline templates and managed delivery and have a really cohesive product experience. When you look at these contributors, uh, some have tried, some in the early briefs, some are like, all advanced users. Do you have any mentoring program where you know you 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 make them more comfortable? You know, or sometimes people they don't feel comfortable in just raising their hand and asking the question. Sometimes people who have like a lot of information and knowledge, how do they you know move the better to the next one? That's a great question. I feel like I planted that question indirectly. So we have um, um, the process for our governance is you can create like RFCs or proposals. And so right now I have an a RFC for a mentorship program open. So we don't have that right now. And it's a little bit hard to understand like where are the right places to get involved, how do you get feedback. Um, we are trying out governance and we've been sort of experimenting for the last year, trying to find something that works, constantly improving. And we don't have that kind of way to get started or get help. And so what I would love to see in the community, but I can't do it by myself, I need help from other people, is to create a mentorship program where if you want to step up your contributions, if you're new to the community, and especially if you care about something specific and want to make progress there, that you have a more straightforward way of getting specific help and getting someone to invest in you so that you can grow in that way and grow technically and grow um, in the Spinnaker ecosystem, and then hopefully contribute that experience back to someone else. Uh, did it ever occur to you that if we are here at Spinnaker Summit, or maybe you already have it in your pipeline, is that there are a lot, so many people, there are a lot of users, uh, just to have like meetups kind of thing where you know contributors, users, everybody, and mentors, I'm not mentors yet, but they all come yeah. sit together on like different tables and they just exchange ideas so that it can come up with some solution to build. Some of the special interest groups, so all of them are community driven, and they some of them are having meetups at the summit. I think this is something that has been talked about in the last month that was a little bit unexpected to me. Like the conference is an action-packed <laughs> day or two days. Um, so I think that that's probably something that will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really cool to meet people in person if you've never met them before and like have that high bandwidth communication. 
Emily, thank you so much for talking about, you know, managed services and Spinnaker. And I look forward to talking to you again when you come up with a program for mentorship. <laughs> and uh, once again, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me.